What's up guys, it's Brian from Cross Coast Gaming with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we modified our, or created our player class and made it so that everywhere our mouse goes, it just leaves chaos in its wake. And uh, today we're going to spend some time making this not awful. Um, you know, pretty much just making it so that there's not water everywhere you go, because obviously this is very temporary and not something we want to keep in the game. So let's go ahead and go to our player class, and that's where most of the stuff we do today is going to take place. And first and foremost, we're going to make a new method for updating. So make an update method for our player. And we're going to say if the mouse dot, uh, is buttoned down, and you can choose an integer to put in here, um, so it's zero or one. Zero is left click, and then one is the right click. There's other button or numbers you can put in there too, but zero and one are left and right click. We're gonna say then that is when you call set tile. So first, let's try that. Let's go to the boot class, and instead of saying player dot set tile and calling it directly, we're gonna call the update method. And now if we run it. It should only go. It's not going now. It should only go when we click. There we go. So we have a little bit more control over what we're doing. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And also, we're going to make it so that you can draw different tiles uh, instead of just water. So at the top here, let's make a private tile type array. I'll just call it types. And we'll say this dot types equals a new array of tile types of size three. I think that's how many tiles we have right now. And then we'll say this dot types at zero equals tile type dot grass. This dot types at one equals tile type dot water. And this, you know, I'm going to switch those two. This dot tile types two equals tile type dot water. And I'm going to make the last one dirt because I think that's the order that they came in. So 0, 1, 2 is grass, dirt, water. And we need another integer up here, or another variable, private int index. And we'll set that in the constructor, this.index equals 0. And so now down here, uh, first off, we're going to change where we set it to water automatically. We're just going to change that to our types, the array that we just made at the index, which is the integers we just made. So types is a list of all the tile types we have in the game, grass, dirt, and water. And then we're gonna access each of these specifically by putting an index variable in there for zero, one, or two. So by default, it's zero, which is grass. Uh, so we just need a way to, in fact, if we start it right now, we should be drawing grass, yeah. So we just need a way to change that index now. Um, so in our update method, we're gonna say, while keyboard dot next and that just means that the keyboard's doing something there's like an event that's happening that we're about to process we're going to say if keyboard dot get event key state as in the the key that's being pressed um i think we just set that equal to the key let me see i might be wrong here uh we're going to say key underscore right did I do that right? Undefined for argument types, boolean int. Keyword dot get human state. Hmm. Maybe it's, let's see, if keyboard get event key. There we go. So instead of get event key state, it's get event key equals right. Let's see if this works. Let's just print out right oops put a semicolon there and if it worked then when we hit the right arrow key we should see something pop up here and it'll probably happen a bunch of times when you just hit it once like that that was two times a bunch of times there yeah but it's working it's it's seeing our right key and if we hit left or up or down it doesn't do anything so that's good so now we just need to limit it to one time per press because uh, what's happening right now is when you're pressing it down in that split second that you have the key pressed down, the actual game is running 
over and over and over and processing that the key is down. So instead of just checking if the key is down, we're also going to say and keyboard dot get key event state. I think that is what we want here. Now let's run it. Yep, there you go. So now it just runs it one time per press. Perfect. So what we really want to do is instead of just saying write, because that's just to test it, is we're going to make a new method here. Private void. I don't know if I want to call this. Uh, move index. I guess that works. And we're going to say index plus plus. We're going to move our index variable up one or add one to it. Now we're going to check if index is greater than our uh, length of our types minus one because of the way it works. Because remember, even though it's three big, it actually only goes to zero, one, two. So if our index is greater than the length of that minus one, so if it's greater than two, then we're just going to set index back down to zero. So that way we can cycle through it. It starts at zero, adds to one, it's good, adds to two, it's good, adds to three, it's good, and the next time it says it adds to four, so we're going to set back to zero. So it just cycles through it over and over. And here, instead of saying write to the console, we're just going to use our move index method. And let's try running that. So first should be grass. Let's erase everything, get a nice clean board here. And if we press to the right, I believe it should be dirt. Yep, so we can get a nice little... Imagine that these guys went along a maze to get where they're at and not just appearing in the middle of nowhere. Oops. Luckily I can erase that. Cool, so that's a kind of tower defense map. And if you go to the water here, you can fill it in and say that this is a... A reservoir. I don't know. Honestly, I could do this forever, just playing with this little tile editor thing. And uh, we're going to get to the point eventually where we can obviously save the maps and then load them. But this is by far the easiest way we've had so far to make our own maps. So feel free to have fun with this and experiment around with it. And pretty soon we're going to be making a save and load feature for these maps. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next Wednesday.